minutes that looks like doo-doo, huh? Well, you don't. Uh, these are the test pods out there. These are the guys testing the configurations, testing out, you know, everything to make a 3D printer go faster than 100 milliseconds so you don't have to, okay? These guys are pushing the limits. They're trying new hardware out. They're experimenting the numbers and the firmware. They're trying out everything to make the single faster. So if you're able to print later on something at half the speed instead of like, you know, five minutes. So you actually get a two, a two hour part and it takes two hours to print it. Imagine being able to cut that down to about half. That's a huge time saver right there. These guys are the guys who are help pushing that movement to go faster and better. So even shaving off just like five to 15 minutes off an hour print, that's a huge difference. You know, like that, that can make a real difference, you know, going from like eight hours to about like five hours. I don't know, I'm doing my, my math backwards, but you know what I'm saying. Every little bit counts. And the bigger and longer your print is, the more you want to get done because the law of averages is if you're printing for a week, something may happen at the very last hour. You don't want that. There's a plethora of different size screws on this part of the build, so don't get caught without the right size. But everything else is pretty much straightforward and easy. You can do this pretty easily. Not a big deal, but you need to have all the right screws and parts. It's a pretty simple build. I'm back. Okay, remember when I talked about my aluminum sheet when I was scratching it up by accident? Um, I wasn't worried about it. Well, I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna first clean it off with some uh, isopropic alcohol, uh, which is just basically rubbing alcohol. And I'm gonna wipe all the dust, fingerprint, and grease my fingertips off of this. And then I'm going to put a filament spring sheet plate on this here as a magnetic bed, all right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the magnetic part down, uh, super easy. We don't have to worry about bubbles and popping things and getting it perfectly. I'm going to show you how. Okay. So first we've got the sheet over here. Okay. And this is, uh, the sheet and here's the magnetic part. So you don't have to scrape the bubbles out because the way I do it is I peel off one side and then the other side I attach to the spring sheet. So it's one solid piece. Okay. Just like this watch. Okay. So when I put it down, right, uh, I'm trying to get everything nice and level, even on the edges using my fingertips to feel, uh, lowering it down, making sure it's level and not level, but you know, like aligned properly. Um, I pinch the corners to make sure I look at it carefully, I lower it down carefully. And then when I'm ready, I just let it go. It's gonna be flat as it is. I just rub the top, push it down a little bit, just like this. And once that's done, uh, this sheet is on. Now that's the texture side and the other side is the smooth side of the sheet. So yeah, this is perfect. No bubbles, no bumps, no nothing. So bada bing, bada boom, snap, done. Okay, let's talk about the gantries. Uh, get all your pieces together. Some pieces may look alike, so be careful when you're printing these so you don't make duplicates of like the left side only and not the right because the right and the left are mirrored and they look very much alike. So make sure you have the parts printed correctly, especially if you're taking your part, your printer, and you have to like, you have no printer. No good. All right, so these things are pretty cool because like bulldogs, they bite from the top and the bottom. They have multiple V-nuts to make sure it's secure. You want to make sure you have a, the right amount of screws because if you're not, you're going to be short and you have to order and you have to wait. No delays. I've said this a million times. Always have the right screws. Now, the normal one that comes with the Tronxy is these uh, plexiglass ones and they only got two holes. Not very good because they're pretty weak. They can snap. And another thing I hate is this piece of 
paper that people never peel off. How many printers have you seen out there with that brown piece of paper that takes two seconds to peel off? Now, these things can snap if you tighten the belt too much. You can see the two screws mount over here, and that's all it has. Uh, you put the two screws there, and the four screws to the motors, and that's it. Tighten the belt up, it can go snap. Now, as I said about screws, I go overboard. If I need eight screws, I buy 20. If I need four screws, I buy as many as I can because the screws are very important, especially once you get above the size 15 millimeters that get more rare that you have them. You can get the 10 and fives and whatever and unders easier, but these are a lot harder to acquire. So I want to have a collection of screws. Now, these two motors over here, side by side, I hate the one with the wires. Why? Because if I have to mod these wires, I have to use shrink tubing and make it look really ugly and loose. Uh, versus this, I can stick a ribbon or I can make a nice cable and custom length it pretty easily. And if this thing goes wrong with the cable, I can swap it out. Now, let's assemble this. Uh, first, you put the two screws over here on top. Okay, and once you do that, uh, you're going to secure this piece to the bottom, well, not the bottom, the underside of the top frame extrusions. So you can place them correctly. If you uh, screw these pieces together, you cannot do that because um, you have to take it apart. Then you're going to put your uh, pulley here over here, and you want to make sure this is tight. I have an issue with these gears that uses grub nuts and things like that, and I'll get into this later on. I have a feeling that this can introduce some sort of like wobble because it's so loose. All right, so uh, let's move on to the next step. Okay, so we wanna make sure these V nuts are aligned properly so they can slip in. You wanna make sure that you can actually get them in and they lock into place because uh, sometimes they'll just spin around and uh, they don't grab on. So you wanna make sure these screws and nuts are fully extended and then squeeze down. And you can actually feel uh, the, nice tight, the nuts tightening onto the extrusion. So once you do that, you start doing all the screws, make sure they're all in because uh, you may have a, uh, a failed one that didn't lock in. So you wanna unscrew it and then re-screw it back in until it, uh, it grabs onto the extrusion. Once you do that, you know, you can get ready for the second part, which is putting the top part on. And the top part goes on uh, the top and you make sure all the, the V-nuts are aligned. Put them down. And then start tightening up the nuts, okay? So tighten up a few just to make sure you got a good grip. Uh, once you got a good grip in there, then you can put the long screws, which would be uh, screw number three and four for the motors. So you have four screws in the motor. Screw colors don't make a difference, you know, as long as it holds everything together. Another thing, you know, that I see out there are the CNC version of these things. Uh, they're great, they're super tight, you know, they will not fail you whatsoever, but will they increase your speed? No. They're a bit of a bling if you want. You know, you can print your own or you get the CNC if you have the extra cash just to make your printer look fancy, but otherwise they are not needed to make it a high speed printer. All right, so now I'm gonna put the other side on. Now, I, for some reason, had an error filming how I put the pulleys on this, but it's pretty self-explanatory. Again, just put those on top of the other piece and just look at the manual. It's There's no gotchas here, it's pretty easy. Just make sure you just have the pulleys in the right uh, direction, you know. One is geared, goes one way, and the smooth one goes another way. We'll look at the manual, I'll show you, it's pretty clear. Okay, so now you tighten these up all the way as much as you can, make sure nothing is gonna come loose. All right, so then you tighten the bottom ones and you're gonna be pretty good to go with these over here. And once you do all four, you're gonna be ready to do the next step. And the next step is gonna be uh, putting the X axis on and things like that, and the belts and uh, all electronics. So, you know, just double check your work, you know, before you get finalized over here and make sure everything's right. If you're putting a screw, what I do is I put the nut underneath and I hold it with my finger 
and then I kind of finger tight till it grabs onto it. Once it grabs onto it, you know, then I start tightening it. Okay, so just tighten it. And once that's good, you're gonna be good to go. And that's pretty much it for the, uh, the gantry parts here, the, the, the four motor parts. As I said before, um, weight is the main factor over here. Now, if this is the standard uh, Tronxy Pro. It has this heavy, heavy bar. It has these heavy metal pulleys. Very heavy, extremely heavy. The whole thing behind the BZ Bot is making it ultra light. Just as one part alone is 58 grams. Put that in there. That's uh, 773 grams. You know, that's a lot of weight to be slinging around on the top part, not including the other side bits too that you have. You have, that's just the one uh, pulley. There's about uh, two more pulleys to go. So um, you want to be aware of that. There are certain times where you don't really care, like previously on the gantry, you don't really care if it's CNC or if it's plastic or whatever, because those parts are moving, you know. But now here is the, uh, other part that I'm using here that's 59 grams and that's uh, 220 versus 700 and something so that's already over 500 grams of weight savings right there okay so remember this is 589 and this was just 188 almost, that one part is almost weighs as much as um, my carbon fiber um, X rod and rail okay so these things are solid as you can see they're solid aluminum you know they're not hollow like this this is the hollow one hang on a second let me just redo this here take it off let me zero it out and put it back on okay so if you're using this one over here that's a 73 grams okay versus the other one and this is only 19 grams still a huge difference using the carbon fiber Okay, let's talk about this over here. That's only 10 grams, okay? The plastic part is going to be a total of 16 grams, a total savings of five grams per side. In the end, 10 grams. Okay, here I was thinking I lost the clips for the Y gantry, but I've got a couple of screws over here. I'm gonna show you how to put this thing together. Um, it's pretty simple. What you do is, I'm going to show you the one that I already did. Notice the gear is on top and where the VZ bot logo is, that's the top part. So it doesn't really make a difference. I'm just showing you so you know the difference. Um, they're both equally uh, hold on both sides. But anyway, so first we need a washer. I'm going to put a washer on the bottom of this. And you also need a... Um, a, uh, a spacer. So spacer goes in first. The geared pulley goes up here and then you put the spacer in between that and the Y gantry. Um, hold it steady because it kind of gets kind of tricky here. And then we're going to get the screw. And once we get it all lined up, we put the screw through and then we put the nut on top of it. All right, so we get this nut and we're gonna just turn the figure tight for now. You know, we'll tighten it up in a minute. And if you notice, one side's gonna be uh, a geared washer and the other one's gonna be just a pulley. And then uh, it's gonna be the opposite for the opposite side. Okay, so we put the screw in, then we get the washer, then we get the pulley, and then we get the spacer. Okay, where's the space here is. Uh, spacer goes in here and you have to kind of bend your screw a little bit so you can get it on. And once you get it on, you put this through and then again, you put the nut. And that's pretty much it. And so now you have two uh, of these things and you're gonna put one on the left side and one on the right side. How do these connect? You probably wanna, don't make these too tight because you want these things to roll. So I'm gonna put these screws in the back first and then I'm going to put that connected to a spacer in a minute. So put the screws in first. And you need a total of four small screws. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to get these blocks over here. These are going to go on the 
X side X, uh, CNC rod, and they have some holes here. In case it doesn't fit properly and it's too tight, what you're gonna do is you're gonna get some sandpaper and you're gonna sand it down. Okay, just a little bit. You don't want to sand it too, too much, just enough for a tight fit. So you're gonna get both sides, left and right, uh, get it nice and even, uh, give it a couple of rubs, and then stick it in to see if that fits and it should line up with the holes. There you go. Line them up. And that is so you don't crack the um, carbon fiber rod. Okay. So now we're gonna go for the linear rails. You don't need a lot of screws for this. You wanna kinda wanna go uh, every other hole. And those rubber plugs, you do not wanna pull out. You're gonna have the intention, and I wanna show you in a minute, because I had the same thoughts you guys are thinking like, yeah, I can put the screw underneath and then put the plug on top. No, uh, they don't stay in very good. And you want those plugs because if you take those plugs up and that rail goes off, um, all your bearings are gonna fall out. So that's to prevent from that block from coming off and falling um, out and having the, bur the bearings spill. Okay, so now once you've got your screws in, you've got your little uh, v nuts, you want to make sure they're lined up properly and they're all in carefully. And then you're going to get this special little C clamp. And this is the thing to keep it perfectly aligned so it's not crooked and it's totally straight. So just clip that on the end. Once you got the those things clipped on, it's good. Uh, try to center as much as you can. And then you're going to want to get your screwdriver and start tightening up these rods. Uh, one screw at a time. First to one side, then do the other, so that way it, does, it doesn't shift. And uh, just turn to like, you know, they get like finger tight, and then you go later on, you go a little tighter. All right, so go there. Okay. You know, I'm doing this right now because I'm making sure that these um, uh, V nuts actually catch on, because if you do it wrong, they're just gonna come out and they're gonna tighten upon themselves, you know. Uh, they're gonna come out of the um, extrusion slot. So you wanna push it out, turn it back and forth um, until you actually feel that bite. If you don't feel that bite, uh, do it again. Okay, so that's pretty smooth right there. And you can see I didn't move those rubber tips. Now here's a spacer on that uh, Y gantry. And now I'm gonna put that onto the block. Tighten that up with a couple of turns on my screwdriver. Okay, on this side over here, which is uh, the right side, you can see the smooth pulley on top and the geared one on the bottom of uh, the space, underneath the spacer. You can see the reds on top and the black, I did that so you can see a little better. Actually, I couldn't really find uh, the other color spacer, so I'm just saying that. All right, so it gets a little tricky because it's a little bit of an angle, but what you can get it in with your um, your driver. Okay, so now we're gonna go to the other side. Okay. So now the pulley is on the up, facing away from you, and it's on the bottom, and the gear is on top, facing you, as closest to you. And you make these tight, and that's good, okay? It's nice and smooth, good to go. And that's it. Okay, we're at the final part right now of uh, the top gantry part, which is gonna be the carbon fiber X rod or a square tube. Uh, we've got some holes in the front, as you can see, and we're gonna line them up with this uh, linear rail. And we're gonna put the screws in the rails and uh, put it in there and then tighten up with a uh, nut driver. A uh, couple of things first. These are U-Song linear rails. They're pretty cheap, they're about 20 bucks a pop uh, versus the more expensive that go about 100. Now you see this plastic plug here? Do not feel like you wanna put a screw in here because there's a hole over there because what's gonna happen is that plug is not going to go back down and then you may have a chance of spilling all your bearings if the block moves all the way to that end over there. This is a bumper guard. Uh, so your block does not come out and have all the beans spill out of it. 
that's the last thing you want during a print is your beans coming out of your block or, or bearings, whatever you want to call them. Okay, so let's line this up on top of the holes. And we're gonna do that with the spacers that you print out. They come in uh, the files. And you're gonna put another one on the opposite side. Yeah, I know, there's no bumper on the end. Calm down, people. Uh, we'll take care of that right now, okay? There. Uh, all right, so now we're gonna line that hole up with the spacer. And then uh, on the back, you can see there's bigger holes, so you can actually fit your uh, nut wrench or whatever you wanna call a tool. Okay, so this looks pretty lined up, okay? Just double checking certain things over here. All right, good. Let's put a screw over here. And once you drop it in, it goes right in like that. I'm going to get my nut driver and I'm gonna put my finger on uh, the hole on the opposite side as I put this nut in and stop the screw from popping out. And I'm just gonna get a loose little one, two turns over here until I get my uh, uh, nut screwdriver. And then I'm gonna hold one side and then I'm gonna turn the nut driver and try to hold it into place. You can turn it whatever you want, that's fine. Anyway, as I was saying, uh, it's definitely a good investment to get this carbon fiber uh, square tubing because it's lighter than even any normal extrusion. It will go faster because it's lighter. We keep talking about the inertia. There's gonna be less inertia than a heavier uh, rod and it's a lot, lot, lot lighter than the Pro Extrusion um, X rods, okay? So I think this is about 30 bucks. My linear rails cost me about 20 a pop. Uh, you can go for the more expensive ones if you want for linear rails and pay like 80. I don't know what they go for, but I know they're really expensive. But these are U songs. I got them on Amazon. I definitely think it was like two for 40 or something like that. Definitely worth it. Okay, so now we're gonna put this in here, kind of tilt it to the side uh, so we can get these holes lined up and this block has to be lined up with the holes or else it's not going to work because this is the holes where the screws go into. And if it's not lined up, you're gonna have some problems. Okay, so. I'm just trying to get a screwdriver over here. Okay, here we go. All right, so push this in very carefully, very gently. I'm gonna do the same on the other side, just to make sure it's all lined up and my screw can go in. All right, so we're good. So I kind of like turn a little bit so this thing can fit at an angle and then I'll, I'll pull it down and it should fit. Now I put one screw in and a second screw and then I'm gonna tighten these down and then put a nut on the bottom of it so they stay secure and yeah. tight. Yeah. Technically, you could probably get away with just this, but you wanna put a nut, a nut on the bottom of the screw just to make sure um, that it wiggles even less. Because it's too loose, it's gonna wiggle around and you don't want that. You want this to be perfectly per perpendicular across your X axis and your Y axis. All right, do the same the other one, put some nuts, tighten them up as much as I can. And that's pretty easy. And we're almost done. Now, remember, these are Yusong uh, linear rails. I'm gonna let you know once we start printing how good they are, they make a lot of noise or what. Uh, but they feel pretty good to me right now.